Jujutsu Kaisen is a morally ambiguous story where those with pure righteous ideals like Itadori have the reality of life shoved into their face over and over. The main power system of the series, Cursed Energy after all, is one devised from quite literally negative emotions. Anger, fear, suffering, pain. These are the feelings Jujutsu sorcerers wield in order to fight. They weaponize the evils of the world to fight back against the evils of the world, or at least what they as humans perceive as evil. Because although Cursed Energy to humans is a representation of our darkest attributes of the evils we see in the world, to the cursed spirits of the world, this same energy represents salvation, truth, and the natural order of the world. And if you want to know what I mean by all this, then keep watching the video. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. And if you want to support this channel even further, then perhaps check out my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. The disaster curses are the embodiment of humanity's fears of volcano, forests, oceans, and people. They are some of the strongest curses in existence, born from the thoughts of thousands, no millions of people. And as they say themselves, that makes them the true humanity. The disaster curses believe that they, not humans, are the true humanity. As if curses are just the feelings of humans given form, the true unspoken feelings of people not silenced by society, then are they not the true humans? Are they not truer to humanity than the humans that spawn them? For this reason, the curses want to erase humanity. They want to create a world of curses, a true world in their view. But as you may have already worked out, this is an impossibility. Curses exist because of humanity. Without humans, curses cannot exist. And this is the tragedy of the cursed spirits. They are not individuals, they are just reflections of people. They hate humans by nature, but can't kill them without risking their own existence. Most curses aren't smart enough to worry about this, they just follow their instincts and that's that. But what about those curses so strong they gain the ability to ponder? Curses which understand the cruel reality of their existence and want to change it. This is the basic motivation behind their plan which is enacted across the first half of the story up until the end of the Shibuya incident arc. However, although this remains the goal of all four curses across the story, each in turn develops other motivations, other reasons to live and to fight for, which is of course what we will now explore. Jogo is often seen as nothing but a punching bag, and in a way this is true, but do remember the two people he fought in the series do happen to be the two strongest in the entire verse, so I do think Jogo gets downplayed a lot as he really is quite strong. And the thing is, he knows this. Pride is one of the most striking aspects of Jogo's character. I mean, it takes a lot of pride in oneself to challenge Gojo to begin with, let alone think you can beat him. As we see in his fight with the world's strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer, he has a lot of pride in his abilities. A pride that is quite quickly snuffed out by Gojo, to the point the cursed spirit of volcanoes is left as a head under Gojo's foot. He is being looked down upon in the most literal of ways. Also in their fight, Gojo overrides Jogo's domain, without even engaging in a domain struggle. And since domains represent the highest pinnacle of one's skill with cursed energy, this simple action by Gojo really drags Jogo's pride through the mud. And well, history repeats itself. Jogo agreed to fight Sukuna, confident he could land a hit, but he was shown just how strong the King of Curses really is, and once again is squashed without ever landing a hit. And as if to mirror his domain being effortlessly overwritten by Gojo's, his fire attacks which he takes much pride in are overpowered by a fire attack of Sukuna's. It's a tragic narrative of a person who has pride in their power, being shown again and again how weak they are, how fragile their pride really was. Though this is all flipped on its head by Sukuna's last words to Jogo. Humans, Jujutsu sorcerers, cursed spirits, you're not bad compared to those I fought over the last thousand years. Stand proud, you are strong. His final moment is one in which his pride is not squashed, but instead acknowledged. To be called strong by the King of Curses, is there no greater proof of your strength? And how does Jogo react to this? He cries. A feeling he didn't know he could experience. One that leads him to question what is even happening. As curses are reflections of us, they are our emotions in their purest form. All the cursed spirits are human in their very own way. Jogo is defined by his pride, one of the seven deadly sins of mankind, a negative aspect of humanity. He fights recklessly because of this pride, overestimates himself while boasting a dangerous ego. Yet when his strength is acknowledged, when his pride is proven to mean something, he cries. A so very human reaction. As those weren't tears of sadness, they were tears of joy. 
And joy is not a negative emotion. It is not a feeling that would have been converted to curse energy, not a feeling that was used to form Jogo. His happiness, his joy, is not a reflection of mankind. It is not a feeling he inherited from humanity. It is a feeling he fostered and developed on his own. This joy is Jogo's and nobody else's. He, more so than all the other disasters, wanted to be human, wanted to make a world of curses where he could live as a human, where he didn't have to be defined by the humans that gave him life. However, in my eyes, the moment he cried tears of joy, when he felt happiness from his strength, being acknowledged, when he understood he would die, but was still content with his life, with his strength the thing he prided himself on, being acknowledged, with his purpose being acknowledged, he became more than just a bundle of cursed energy, far more than just a curse. He became just as much human as anybody else. He accomplished his goal, he just didn't come to understand that till the very end. Someone though I do think understood this was Dagon, the Curse of the Oceans. Dagon more so than all his fellow curses that valued connection, he valued his friends. I mean it was his anger over the death of Hanami that made him awaken from a cursed womb and turn it into a full-fledged cursed spirit. He gets angered when he's referred to as just the cursed spirit. He places value on not only his name, but the names of his friends as well. They are more than just cursed spirits, they have names, personalities, connections. Dagon wants to replace humanity to prove that his friends are worthy, that they collectively are better than humanity, that they deserve to be acknowledged. It's pride much like with Jogo, but the difference is that Dagon's pride is in his friends. Connection is one of the most important things that make us human. We are a social species, that's why we created society. And so is it not fitting our reflections, the curses, value the same things, want to create a society of their own, with their own kind? That is Dagon's goal, to make curses great as individuals, individuals with names of their own, which is why it's ironic he is killed by Toji, the man who threw away his name. He abandoned his family and lived in solitude, he went against everything Dagon stood for and in the end killed him. This once again ties into the trend of the cursed spirits dying in truly tragic but ironic ways. Now all the curses value one another, they care for each other, but one curse values something else, the earth itself. Hanami is the embodiment of mankind's fear of the forest, and he is someone who hates humanity just as much as he loves nature. Hanami is as much a nature spirit as they are a cursed spirit. They don't have the natural inclinations of a normal curse, and so it's debatable whether their hatred for humanity came from their nature as a curse or their own personal feelings. Those feelings being love, a love for the earth and nature, the very things humanity is destroying. This is what Hanami fights for, for nature. That said, he is still a curse, and he still wants to eradicate humanity. I think people generally misunderstand Hanami's character. If you don't pay attention, it's easy to think Hanami is not killing the Jujutsu High students out of some reluctance to killing. But that's not really the case. The only reason he didn't kill was because they knew Sukuna was fond of one of the students, and they didn't know which one and didn't want to risk killing this person. I mean, as the fight continues, Hanami says themselves that they are starting to enjoy the fight. They are becoming more and more of a curse giving in to their violent nature, something represented by the reveal of his black arm, a metaphor for his nature as a curse. Much like how his black arm contrasts his white body, his desires to protect and fight conflict. To the point that in the attack of the school, Hanami admits that he is close to wanting to kill Todo and Itadori, even though the plan was to leave them all alive. Hanami's death comes at the hands of Gojo being crushed into oblivion by infinity, an ironic death for a curse that acts as a wall to defend and protect, an unbreakable wall left to crumble, a protector who dies without protecting anything. As shortly after Hanami's death, a death that he didn't expect, not a suicidal last stand to protect his friends, but a brutal surprise attack. All his friends died as well, each killed in equally brutal ways. Well, all except for one, the curse that represents humans' negative feelings for each other, Mahito, the only one of the four curses to not have a proper death being merely absorbed by Kenjaku, not giving any closure to those he wronged. And that death itself was quite fitting for Mahito. A death with no purpose is perfect for a curse with no purpose, one who lives on instinct and nothing more. As Mahito is by far the most human of all the curses, a literal embodiment of humans' feelings about humans. I mean, his name literally means true human. Now, I could make a whole video on just Mahito, so sorry if this is a little bit brief, but Mahito is the only one of our Curse Quartet who doesn't really care about the new age of curses. A bit ironic since he came up with the plan to begin with. 
as well he is someone who doesn't hold value in goals or plans, he lives in the moment. He kills when he wants to in the same way we humans eat when we are hungry. Now nihilism is usually seen as a negative thing, because well if nothing matters, then what is the point? But as suggested by Nietzsche, nihilism can be optimistic, as well if nothing matters, then you can do whatever you want and there isn't any consequences. And this is definitely something that lines up with Mahito, as he takes great pleasure in the moment, in doing whatever he wants to do. He is very much like a child, something said by Nanami, who imagines he is a newly born curse, which is yet another reason why he is such a good foil for Isidori, who is also a child in the world of Jujutsu Sorcery. Mahito is curious, he wants to test his limits and explore what life has to offer. He questions why Yuji thinks it's okay to kill cursed spirits, when he's so against cursed spirits doing the same back. He questions the world in his curiosity, again, a very human thing. But going back a point, he genuinely believes curses have a right to kill humans, that nobody should object. As he learns more about the world, he declares he wants to become a true curse. Ironic when you remember the meaning behind his name. He wants to shed his human form and become a cursed spirit proper, which in the end he does, but as a result he loses the ability to shape his own soul and so loses a core part of himself. As Mahito isn't a true curse, he is a true human. He tries to reject this, but it's true. This might be why he doesn't seem to care about the plan to make a land of curses, why he doesn't care about becoming a true human, as well he already is one, and he is disgusted by that fact. He is said to be the mirror of humanity, the dark aspects of us we choose not to look at, our shadows, something shown clear as day in Nanami's death scene. I didn't know you were here. Yup, the whole time. In his fights with Yuji, Mahito again and again shows him a mirror of himself, the hypocrisy he spouts, the anger and hate within him. He shows him the monster inside of Yuji, the human. However, Mahito says that he does this as a curse, that he causes suffering as a cursed spirit. But that's not true, it's because he is human that he causes such pain. The thing that to me makes Mahito so incredibly human is the simple fact he doesn't want to be one, that he rejects his true identity, that he tries to be something he is not, that he struggles against his birthright, something which I think we can all agree aligns up with many of the series' other characters. The struggle to fight back against what you were born as, the path that is laid out for you, is something oh so very human, and that is what Mahito tries to do, is why he encourages the other spirits to act like curses, why he tells Hanami to fight, as he doesn't want to be human, he wants to be a curse. He may claim to only care about the moment, but he does care about the future, he cares about his place in it, hoping it will be as not a human but a curse. He manipulates others for his own amusement, sure, but he also does it to change them, to prove people can become something else entirely from what they naturally are. That to me is why his innate curse technique is soul manipulation, as he tries to prove people can change, he deforms humans into inhuman forms to prove a human can lose its humanity, hoping he can do the same. He spouts about natural order, but then he acts like a god and changes things, because might is right, at least to him it is. But even if he spouts about natural order, that the strong killing the weak is just the way it is, he's a hypocrite. He thinks killing humans is fine as they are weak, if they can't kill him back then they deserve to die. It's just predator and prey, but when Yuji is stronger than him, when he goes to kill him, he runs, because as soon as he is the prey, when the natural order is against him, he opposes it, again, such a human way to think. He runs from Yuji scared of death, even though Jogo says curses don't fear death, he has a human right to the end. However, in the end, he gets absorbed by Kenjaku. The manipulator was just a piece for an even grander schema. Mahito valued both death and life equally, but then when faced with it, he was scared of it. But in the end, he didn't die. He was just absorbed. It was an end with no significance, which fits up with his views on the world. However, to Kenjaku, Mahito was an important tool for his plan of unleashing the Cullen Games. His life did have purpose in the end, just not to himself. He thought he lived a life of freedom, a life that only meant what he wanted it to, but in the end he was just a child, he never was free, and his life did matter, just not to him. The goal of the curses in the Shibuya arc was to seal Gojo and resurrect Sukuna. They wanted the King of Curses to wipe out humanity for them and lead the world to one of curses. But they misunderstood what Sukuna was, what he stood for. He wasn't a cursed spirit like them, he was the King of Curses. The thing is, they never could have succeeded. And something I think sums up these four curses oh so very well, is what Sukuna says to Jogo. Humans flocking together, curses flocking together, 
comparing themselves to those around them, leads to weakness and stunts their growth. You should have burned everything you desired to ascend it without thinking, to reach the heights of Gojo Satoru and not worry about the future or identity. But you lack the hunger to take hold of your desires. Sukuna and Gojo stand different to all others. They have a desire, a hunger, far greater than any other. The curses may be special grade, they may be strong, but they are still just curses. Or as I would argue, just humans. They can't be expected to measure up to the legends. They can't just expect to accomplish what they set their minds to as the world is too cruel for every dream to come true. The fact they try and fail is even more reason to call them human, as at the end of the day, they are just made up of the feelings of humanity, and so they act on those feelings even if it will lead to failure and defeat, as that is just how us illogical beings called humans act, and the curses that spawn from our fears and dreads are just mirrors of us, they are just one part of the whole that is us, the us that is a human. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, you can get your name at the end of the video, like Ikari Desu, 7SO, Ringjack9696, Dewey, and General Tonyos. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.